This is Hot Chocolate with Paul. I am with Francis Capel, who is running Get Mad Radio, which is part of the Make a Difference Now Foundation. So can you tell me a little bit more about what you're doing? Yes. Uh, myself, Ed Contini, and Brian Judah, we started Get Mad Radio to create an alternative to what has become commercial broadcasting. Uh, unfortunately, over the years, the big corporations have taken over the majority of radio stations. So local music and unsigned bands really don't have a place to get their music out there. You know this as a musician. Um, the industry is not exactly fair. It doesn't really factor in how music is originally created. I mean, the Beatles started as a, you know, a, a German club band in the basements of the cavern. And it wasn't until later on that they actually had the popularity, had the record contracts and stuff. So we wanted to go back to an old dynamic of how radio used to be focusing more on local music, focusing more on local elements. That's why we set up as a nonprofit to be able to support the other nonprofits, not just here in Rochester, Western New York, but wherever people are engaging. That's why we're also distributed on iHeartRadio because we wanted to give a presence to those bands, be it Blue Circle or Side Eye or Deb Magoni or a whole host of other really great musicians that we have here in the Rochester community. Other than the website or iHeartRadio, can it be heard over the air or any other locations? We are not on the FM band because of the FCC licensing, but you could, in theory, like if you have an Alexa or an Echo, you could say, blah, blah, listen to Get Mad Radio. Um, there's Google and Apple apps that you can get installed for, say, your phone or your car. So we've set up as many different ways besides just going to the website at getmadradio.com, which has a built-in music player that you can listen at any given point in time. It'll give you the artist, the album artwork, you know, all the all the great internet stuff that we have available now. And this is what allows bands to get their music recognized by the bigger licensing groups, be it BMI, be it Sony, because obviously they don't have record contracts and record companies that are producing and marketing them. Now, besides the three of you that you mentioned, who else is involved in this project? Oh, there's a bunch of people. Uh, my brother, Scott Palingra, uh, who has for a number of years, he's also a musician. Uh, he does work with Rochester Rock Brigade in helping to promote uh, local bands and local venues, be it Iron Smoke Distillery or Whiskey River or Bunsies. Um, you have Shia, uh, Shia Hodes, who is the foundation's president, and also she designed the website and does all the marketing stuff. Uh, you have Ativia Fantagrossi, who is Brian Judah's wife. Uh, she's another board member on the nonprofit. Uh, she, Amber, and Shia do a show on Thursdays called The Spiritual Spectrum, where they, they get into elements of spirituality, faith, magic. So we're trying to create a diverse programming field that not only focuses on music, but focuses on the things that affect us, be it you know a nonprofit. We're doing our September 7th show that Blue Circle is performing at to raise money for Autism Up, which is a local uh, group here that supports not just people with autism, but the families and the caretakers and the community in general with programs. And a lot of them are free. So um, we have uh, Miss Natty, who's one of our uh, radio hosts who does a Sunday night show. We have a lot of people that are now coming into the fold. And we just launched this five weeks ago, a little over a month and a half. So we're still building on the programming. I have a good friend, Tom Hampton. Uh, in Nashville, he's going to be producing a show. We have others that are, as we speak, producing and getting elements that we will be releasing over the next month or two. Now, does the uh, Make a Difference Now Foundation uh, focus more on music? Or I know you mentioned charities or or what's what's the difference between the two of those and how do they complement each other? Well, the Make a Difference Foundation is the nonprofit where we will focus on different groups based on what's going on. So say it's a veteran that needs a wheelchair ramp and the VA just won't do it. 
we'll organize something to help get the monies to do that. Or as the earlier analogy, like with Autism Up, we're doing the September 7th show to raise money and awareness for their programs because a lot of people can't afford these programs. So they provide these services, a lot of them for free. So the foundation focuses on the helping other elements in the community. The radio station is the voice where we can promote, where we can market, where we can talk about different elements, just kind of like what you and I are doing and what we discussed in bringing your show to a broader audience to show people that we can do these things organically within our communities without it being just about the money. You know, like a lot of radio stations will charge you a hundred dollars, you know what I mean, for a 30 second spot. You know, we're not, we don't charge our people to produce in shows. We don't charge the bands to play their stuff on the radio. You know what I mean? That's part of the concept is to build better bridges between our different communities, be it a rock band, be it a blues band, be it a nonprofit, be a local business like Iron Smoke Distillery. Now, you and I met for the first time earlier this year when I was with Blue Circle. And I just want to state for the record that I was the first drummer for Blue Circle, but I'm not currently the drummer. Um, that was a personal decision made by myself. Um, more, it has more to do with um, my time and how much availability I have with other projects that I have going on. Uh, just, a, just a funny little comment there. Uh, the, the new drummer that they brought in, his name is Bill. I, I've been told uh, looks a little bit like me and uh, his playing style is a little bit like mine. So you might not even be able to tell the two of us apart from time to time. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's right. You and I met on one of the shows uh, when we were still over on WRFZ. So and that that's, so, you know, again, and I read, you know, I, I saw what you had posted and I understand it. You know what I mean? You're at a point now where you want to focus on the things that are closer to your heart. I mean, music is beautiful, but you've been doing it for a long time like I have. And sometimes you yeah. have to shift the balance or different elements, you know, and you also, uh, from what I understand, you officiate weddings. Yes, I do. So you have a lot of things that you're involved with just besides being a drummer. All right, exactly. Now, is there any connection here between uh, Get Mad Radio and WRFC or? None. No? Zero. Okay. Yep. No. We, no. Uh, listen, uh, to be perfectly blunt, um, there were several reasons why we all chose to walk away and do this. The first and the foremost, is the FCC has strangled any element of FM radio being viable. It is now a commercial property that is controlled by a handful of huge conglomerate corporations that basically shove it down our throats. They say, listen to this, and that's it. And there isn't a real connection anymore with the local communities. You grew up like I did with the element of FM radio they right. were much more interactive. They would do live simulcast. They would have bands come in and perform things that you wouldn't hear anywhere else. And it wasn't driven behind the corporate model because there really wasn't a corporate model for it. Um, but we live in a time now with the internet and stuff and the internet has become the future of where music is going to. People listen to music on their phones, on their devices, their computers. They don't want to be told what they can or can't listen to. So as an example analogy, you used to be able to play George Carlin on the radio. You can't anymore, but we can. So we want to bring back some of those elements, let people make their own choices. And it's the old analogy from the band, take what you need, leave the rest behind. Right. So how does that work with the licensing? Of, we pay the licensing. We, we pay for it. Okay. Um, there's no way around it these days. You know, the, the big corporations have created a system and understandably artists want to get paid. So if you've spent all the time and effort and money to produce music, to put it out there, they should get paid for their efforts. But so much of it is wrapped into the corporate model that most musicians don't get anything. You know, I'm sure you've seen and heard the stories you know, you could get 10 million Spotify listens and you get a check for 12 cents, right. you know what I mean? And it just, it's absolutely ridiculous. So we wanted, and we have the blessing, the luxury of, because of what we've done through the years and who we are, that we could create this station 
in a way that we're not going to charge artists. We're not going to charge you to bring a show to bring your message to people. We wanted it to be not only organic, but we wanted it to truly represent the best elements, not only of radio, but of, of human nature. You know, that's why we're a nonprofit. We're not getting paid to do this. Everything goes back out to support the community, to provide this so people have something different to turn to. Right. So for the foundation, uh, do you do fundraising or how do you pay for your expenses? Yes, we do fundraising. We have underwriters. Um, we have groups that we work with that we have vetted and that, you know, obviously want to be engaged. Uh, it's a process like anything else. We're slowly building it, um, but we're not building it as a corporate entity. So most of it is going to be geared towards supporting things within the community, be it Autism Up, be it the Mental Health Association of Rochester, be it Mythic Treasures over in Henrietta or Iron Smoke Distillery, because again, we're losing our local businesses. We're losing venues, especially since the pandemic. and if we don't take care of it, it will be taken away from us. And then we'll all be forced to listen to Taylor Swift 24 hours a day. <laughs> well, some may love that. Some may not love that. So well, I, listen, guess I, I don't begrudge it, but you yeah. understand that there has to yeah. be a place for different ideas, different viewpoints, be it from a spiritual context. You know, we don't have these honest conversations. It gets polarized. So people only see the little things that the media will allow to come through and they're usually based off of, you know, shock value, you know, like, look, a hundred people blown up, bodies thrown all over the place. You know what I mean? But why aren't we talking about the guy who, you know what I mean? Went around and collected soda cans to pay for a veteran's wheelchair ramp, which is a true story. You know what I mean? That I think is more important and gives us more of a sense of hope, if you will. I mean, I'm sure you can appreciate this from just the simple analogy, versus when we were coming up versus where we are now in the whole scheme of things, be it political, be it religious, be it whatever. Right. So what's your background? You're a musician. Uh, what bands have you played in? What instruments do you play? I pretty much play anything with strings. I have over the years, I play mandolin, I play guitar, I played banjo, uh, I played bass, I play keyboards, I sing, I write. Um, I started as a kid. Uh, my mother was one of the original kind of freak gypsies in the, in the late 60s. So she would drag me around to different music elements. And I grew up around people who played old time folk, bluegrass. And I followed the old timers around with a guitar. And I just learned by mimicking them. You know, just again, little long haired kid with a guitar in his hand. And People took the time to say, all right, this is a G, this is a D. And then I just kind of built on it over the years. Um, last band uh, that I was in before I moved up to Rochester was a band called Broken Past uh, out of uh, Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey. Uh, I did an album about two and a half years ago that I produced, engineered, and literally independently <laughs> released myself uh, called Music from the Garden. And it has a wide range of styles. Um, buddy of mine kind of referred to it as uh, uh, Allison Floyd, somewhere between Allison Chains and Pink Floyd. And, you know, I'll do acoustic stuff. I'll do harder rock stuff. I have worked uh, with kids with autism for a number of years. I believe in the concept that if we want a better world, then we have to do something. We have to be engaged. I believe in the concept of service work. You know, when you can do things for other people, that's how we really make a difference. It can't always be about money. It can't be about ego. It's just simply doing the right thing at the right time. So I, I spent a lot of time doing that. Um, I've also been very active with elements within uh, recovery. Uh, too many of our people we lose to addiction, depression, and all these other elements because, again, we don't have the conversations. We don't engage with each other enough to understand why somebody ends at this place. Not everybody wakes up in the morning and just decides that, hey, they want to be an alcoholic or they want to be a drug addict or they want to feel this way. And unfortunately, our system, again, is set up from a profit model. You know, there, there's no money in curing, 
but there's a lot of money in drawing people down treatment of symptoms. So we always want to throw drugs at people. Here, take this pill. You'll feel better. Side effects may include death. And, you know, we spin around these elements. You know, the opiate crisis is a great analogy. Um, just this Saturday, uh, Dean Lucas did the Lee Lucas Memorial Run, which was uh, the eighth year that they've done it. Dean, unfortunately, lost his son to addiction, and he needed to, for himself and for the rest of his family, find a way to make a difference. So they've been raising money for the Father Tracy Advocacy Center for a number of years because he believes that if we don't take care of each other, no one else will. So we're working with different groups like that or musicians like, you know, Dev Magoni or Side Eye or Blue Circle, people who will come out and help. They'll support, they'll make a difference. You know, the show uh, that we did at Iron Smoke for Mary Cariola, a Sunday afternoon, we raised $1,100 to help them without having to spend a dime. You know, it's an old school organic dynamic. Yeah, maybe it's not going to be millions of dollars, but those dollars add up and they actually go back into our community to help people versus pay for a billboard somewhere or for somebody to have a nice black tie dinner and, you know, toast with champagne and kind of, you know, pat each other on the back for really doing nothing to help anybody. But that's where we are. We, we are now in an age where the illusion is more important than the reality. Well, having participated in that Mary Cariola fundraising myself, I can say I appreciate the way it was, the way it was done. Thank you. you know, it, 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 you know, it was a good cause. It, it gave my band some exposure and it was a fun time for everybody was, that was there. And uh, uh, the, the end result of it, of it was something good. So you have the, um, the Autism Up fundraiser coming up. Can you tell me a little more about, about that? Yeah, well, that's going to be September 7th over at the I-Square stage next to House of Guitars, uh, Blue Circle is going to be one of the bands performing obviously minus you with the with the new improved version of you we'll call it that that has come out or is it the lesser version of you <laughs> i mean i don't want to do yeah, opal the disservice and say you know what i mean because this is the narrative but obviously you're humble enough about it you made the choices that you need to and it isn't always about you know anything else it's just this is where you're at in your life i went through that as a single parent when i was raising my son i came out of the music industry for almost 20 years to be able to do what I believed was more important was be a father at right. that point in time. And now I've been able to come back on, he's you know older now and, you know, he's graduated college. So I can, I have the freedom now to be able to do the things that I'm doing. Uh, but we also have uh, the Mick and Mac show, uh, which is kind of like an outlaw country uh, acoustic duo. Uh, we have uh, Buzzomatic and his band Side Eye. Uh, Brian Judas, Day's End, and myself and Ed Contini, uh, we are Pocket Full of Wolves, will be performing with Day's End. Uh, we're going to have a puppet show uh, by Punch and Judy for the kids. We're going to do, you know, the, the prize raffles, the 50-50. Uh, Autism Up's going to have a table there to have information for parents, you know, who want to come out. It's a free event, and it is a family-geared event. So, you know what I mean? There's not going to be any alcohol there. I'm not going to use the language that I would sometimes use on my show. Obviously, it's not exactly child friendly. So we can adapt. We work around the situations based on what is needed. You know what I mean? So as a performer, and you know this as a drummer, we adapt to the situations. And that's what we're going to continue to try and do is support the community support local initiatives and obviously support the local bands and musicians, you know, who aren't going to get airplay any other way. Right. Well, I may not be playing that day, but I will be there for at least the beginning part of it. Um, so I'll be happy to watch. So um, I can't stay for the whole day because I do have a wedding later in the afternoon. No, ah, listen, so, we appreciate I mean, all the support. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, what other uh, fundraisers or charities do you see coming up in the near future? Well, one of our big beliefs is taking care of those who protect and take care of us, be it first responders, uh, be it for veterans, specifically, again, within the community. Uh, autism is a big one. 
uh, addiction recovery elements are another. We are currently working on creating a couple for uh, domestic violence elements. Uh, some of this, again, is organic because a lot of things, especially in the Rochester community here, are, are shifting. Uh, there's this huge thing now with the United Way is pulling back their funding. We've had a couple of really ugly debacles with other nonprofits that have not been transparent that we're finding out now that they've basically been embezzling millions of dollars to fund their lifestyles. Uh, there was another article in the Democrat and Chronicle the other day about another one of these supposed community leaders, quote unquote, uh, that they just came in and, you know, he just basically got nailed with, you know, fraud and embezzlement charges. And you and I both know, um, regardless of what anybody thinks about the government or this and that, they don't come to your house and arrest you for something like that if they don't have something tangible. You know, it's not like you ran a red light. You know what I mean? These are financial white collar crimes is one of the terms that's always used to it. So we're going through a process of vetting. We want to make sure that anything that we do is actually going where it's supposed to go. That it isn't just somebody saying, hey, you know what I mean? Buy Bob snake oil. You know. That too much has gone on. You and I both have very similar viewpoints in some of the dysfunctionality in the system, we'll call it, in, in a nice, polite way without having to go down those things. But there, there is too much greed. There is too much manipulation. There's too much rhetoric. So we have to kind of go backwards and reset some of this. It used to be when you and I were coming up, you could have a handshake between somebody as a business deal and would hold. Now, even with a signed contract, you still run the risk that, you know, people don't care. They'll just be like, hey, go ahead and sue me. And it's not a good state of affairs. And especially for nonprofits, which have limited access to funds and funding, these are the programs that we need. We need them to help better protect our company and also to protect our small businesses because they are every year disappearing and being replaced with 7-Elevens and these other huge corporate monstrosities, and they don't actually serve or help our community. Well, you have certainly listed off a few charities and things that are needed that I can personally relate to, so I really do appreciate what you're doing. Um, I'm excited to be a part of Get Mad Radio, you know, it was kind of an honor to know that something that I'm doing just because I like doing it for no other reason. Um, hot chocolate with Paul, um, you know, my background is in radio and television broadcasting. I left it just about 10 years. It would be uh, the 10th anniversary of when I last worked in a TV station is coming up on September 5th. So, um, you this understand is... how it works. You've been oh, yeah, in, yeah. as they said, you've been in the belly of the beast within how our media has become. And that's not to point the finger and say this person is worse than the other. But having met you, having interacted with you, not yeah. only on the previous show, but again, your support uh, for the Slosh Fest that we did back in April and getting to know Opal and others and stuff like that. Part of what we do is to bring people like you who have a good message, who have practical experience and isn't afraid to come out and say, hey, you know what, I'm going to talk about this or I'm going to talk about that. And, and you're going to, in your own way, try and make a difference. So strength in numbers, the more people that we can bring into that to get those messages out the better off we're all going to be because that's what leading by example is. It isn't just talking about it. It's actually doing things to, and I'm going to use the tagline, make a difference. Right. Very nice. I'm proud. I'm proud to be a part of this. Thank you. Listen, we're really happy to have you as well too. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, is there anything else that you feel we should know about get mad radio? The biggest thing right now is, is, changing some of the perceptional elements, especially when it comes to being able to have a conversation, being able to interact, being able to listen to each other. We have too much polarization. We have too many people who want to capitalize on keeping us divided, keeping us locked into these imaginary bubbles 
of this, that, and the other thing. Don't get me wrong. Certain things are what they are. A Nazi is still a Nazi, no matter what type of package you want to wrap around it. But we've kind of lost the ability to really kind of parse it, to say, okay, you know what? This is acceptable, but this is not. We're making progress, but it, it's still, we've kind of gone backwards in some way since the pandemic, and we're just beginning to fight our way back, I think. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's a big problem with what's going on in the world, especially in the United States right now with so much political division. Oh, God, um, yeah. One of the things that I keep saying is everybody's shouting, nobody's listening to each other. And if people would stop and listen to each other a little bit, maybe we would actually find some common ground. Well, listen, we have a lot of common ground. We have our children, our hopes, our future. Um, it's kind of hard to argue against laughter. It's hard to argue against everybody dancing and singing and having a great time. Why can't we capture that spirit and apply it toward the things? It doesn't matter how you choose to believe in a dynamic. You may believe in one thing. I may believe in another. But we both believe in helping people. So that should be the common ground, changing how we not only interact, but like you said, listening, trying to understand, hmm, why do you feel that way? I never thought about it that way. So there, there is room to grow, but it's also about getting the message out there. That's half the battle because so much of this is driven from a corporate perspective. Who can be the loudest? Who can be the most insane? Because that's what gets the likes and the subscribers and the advertisers. Oh, wow, you know, you got 10 million people following you. Well, yeah, they're following you because you basically went up there and just did something so extreme that not unlike a slow motion car wreck, yeah, everybody comes out and they want to watch the debacle. And that's not helping us. It's the same analogy when you see these videos of somebody, you know, getting mugged or killed. You got 30 people standing around with a phone watching it happen yeah and nobody's actually doing anything that to me is is the purest definition of insanity we have to get better at taking care of each other we are now the elders of the tribe we have to try at least to the best of our ability to shift the narrative before it gets worse and it might have to get worse before it gets better i mean i'm a big student of history Every civilization since the beginning of time has faced this particular dilemma. And yeah. it's been history repeats itself. Right. It is the unfortunate catalyst that has destroyed every civilization, you know, be it the Mayans, be it the Romans, be it the Third Reich, be it whatever analogy you want to come from. It always comes back to the same thing. You have a small section of people who manipulate the narrative, manipulate the word, manipulate the people, and then the whole bottom falls out, and then we're the ones that have to come in, pick up the mess, and start it all over again. Right. Well, I want to thank you for this conversation. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of this, and I want to... Yeah, no, listen, you thank you for success. having me on. We'll have you come back on, and we'll have a, a bit of a more unfiltered conversation that's one of the beautiful things about what we're doing <clears throat> we don't believe in censorship don't get me wrong you can't scream fire in a crowded theater analogy right. but we need to have a little bit more direct honesty i'm a big fan of george carlin he speaks in a way that yes some of those words can in of themselves be offensive but he believes in the power. He believed in the power of words, and it's about context. We call it the Contini context. Huh. Everything is relevant to the variables. So just because you're looking at it a particular way based on your experiences doesn't make you wrong to the next person because it's unique to you. And that's, I think, part of the trick in being able to actually, as you said, listen to other people, understand other people, and hopefully empathize with other people to find a better path forward. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you again.